good afternoon. I am Heather Van Leer and I am the wife of Philip Van Leer who has glaucoma. I'm here today to um, learn more information just about glaucoma research, um, how I can be a good advocate for my husband, as well as how I can be a good supporter as we progress through learning more about this disease and um, just the future research that there is for it. Yes, I belong to her. I'm, I'm Philip Van Leer. Uh, I've been a glaucoma patient since 2020. That was when I was first diagnosed, updated diagnosis in 2015 from open angle glaucoma to acute end stage open angle glaucoma. And it's been an interesting journey. The discovery that I had glaucoma was, uh, was a bit shocking and surprising. I was sitting at a Cubs game and I had uh, field glasses and I kept trying to clean my, the left lens of my field glass because it just seemed to be a little fuzzy. And then uh, during one of those times when I was trying to clean the glass, I just happened to have closed my right eye and I realized that it wasn't the lens of my field glasses that were fuzzy, but it was actually my left eye. That was the first time that I had experienced some sort of, um, of vision change. I long ago stopped uh, asking why, uh, because uh, I don't know if we're ever, as human beings, as finite beings, ever entitled to know the answer why. What I have found and what works for me is better to ask myself, what can I do with this? I also say I'd rather be better about it than, than bitter about it. So living for, with glaucoma for me is an opportunity to be better, not bitter. One of the most challenging aspects of it is the psychological, emotional uh, aspect of, of life, your life being different. We have that moment when we were diagnosed with glaucoma, and then we have the choices we make once we're diagnosed. And if I could give any advice to people that are dealing with a new diagnosis, a fresh diagnosis of, of, of this disease, is that it's not the end of our lives. Is that we can, with a with great support system, you know, with wonderful modalities, with great therapies, you know, with amazing efficacy, uh, with really top notch top notch professional care, there is so much more in front of us than behind us as a sighted person. And for many uh, glaucoma patients, uh, the vision loss is not going to be severe. Uh, for me, mine has mine has been. Uh, very severe, but as, I, as I've said many times, as I've lost my physical sight, uh, thank God I've gained more insight. And that insight has helped me to explore life in different ways. And, and I think that's something that, that uh, glaucoma patients just need to be encouraged about, uh, sometimes maybe even daily, you know, is that there's more out there for you. There's, there's more experiences and there's others that may be experiencing different um, challenges, uh, different diseases, different liabilities, that they may be able to find some type of inspiration or support in your story because of how you've approached this. So being a caregiver is not easy, um, but despite the challenge, it um, grew us closer together because it really required us to do a lot more teamwork. It allowed us to have more conversation about what type of things that we can do at home to make things easier. So making sure that you are open and flexible and just realizing that it is going to be a little bit of a life change, but it can be a life change for the better. So make sure that you educate yourself, um, make sure that you are encouraging um, and supportive of your partner, making sure that they have the tools and resources that they need. So for instance, we had to go out and purchase a big scanner. I just said it was our sixth family member. It's huge, but it allowed you know my husband the opportunity when it first started to still read the newspaper, um, still be able to read a book. And so despite that that was a, a different type of change that was going to happen. We couldn't just go sit down on the couch and read. We had to move that location. But just being open to that and just realizing that you are a great support to that person. They're going to come to you. They're going to want to be that shoulder to cry on. And we don't have the answers, but just knowing that letting your partner know, I'm here for you. How can we do this together? What do you need from me? What can I do? 
and then what can we do together um, has been really beneficial to help us through this progression because it did not happen as though he woke up one day and lost this vision. And so being patient is another piece of advice I'd give. Um, just patience with um, cooking, right? That had to change drastically. Um, the difference of being able to um, cut his own food. That's something that now I have to take on the ownership of, but making it seamless, making it be as like, I take pride in that now, even though you can't do that. And that's something that I know allowing him to have to ask me for that help can be sometimes at the beginning was pretty stressful because things that he used to be able to do now cannot do. But just knowing that I'm as much a part of this as, as he is individually. I'm almost ashamed to admit that after 22 years of dealing with glaucoma that I did not know about GRF. Uh, and once I was introduced to it, I was so impressed. I mean, knowing that it's an organization that's been active for over 40 years, but just the depth of research that's involved and the number of partners from, you know, the 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 technology, the clinicians, uh, the patient advocates. Uh, I am so excited. We, Heather and I, are so excited about being involved with this organization now and um, just exploring and, and discovering, creating, crafting ways that we can get more people involved, not just with the GRF, but also more glaucoma patients uh, informed and, and plugged in. Uh, I'm, it's, it's really exciting, really motivating. I would, I really hope and, and I would love to be part of an effort to um, make life, make this journey uh, easier, um, uh, more accessible, um, uh, more uh, comfortable for glaucoma patients and, and their families, and, and just to encourage um, more involvement with all three levels from the scientists and the researchers uh, to the clinicians and of course to the patients and the families just to make it even more of a uh, of a team effort i think the future is very bright it's almost ironic to say that but i can truly envision just a a, a bright future for uh, the cure for this for this disease um, yeah yeah <laughs> so the impact of glaucoma on our life and our family has been life-changing, but in a good way. So we do have to, I would say, travel much closer together as a family. We cannot just leave him and, and go somewhere. Um, we do have to be very strategic and planning out things, especially, for instance, we wanted to go to Star Rock and go hiking. Well, there were certain things that we had to do to plan for that. Um, there's some things that we've just learned to adapt to at home, such as putting little sticky dots on knobs on the microwave. So we know that, hey, that's how dad is able to use the microwave. Or we make sure that the kids know that they can't just leave things lying around. They have to put their shoes in the same spot all the time. When they come home from school, we put all of our bags in the same spot. So there's been a little bit more um, organization, I would say, in terms of how we move every single day. We've had to create just a lot of color-coded things. Um, we make sure that things in the refrigerator, that if there's leftovers, we know what side of the refrigerator those are on so that there's still accessibility. So it, it's changed how we kind of go about some of our day-to-day -day operations in the home. It has also just changed how we also then will interact with others when we invite other people over and just being able to have more open conversation about it. It's something that we're okay talking about. And so for our kids to be able to articulate, hey, my dad is low vision, he has a hard time being able to, to see, so that they understand when they're around that, hey, we have some certain 
boundaries or make sure that you don't leave something over here or make sure you don't just put your cup on the, on the middle of the counter because it's probably going to get spilt if it's left there. And um, one other thing is just how we are able to go to events. So when we go out to sporting events or we go to the movie theater, it's definitely changed where we sit location-wise. I always <laughs> joke to everyone all the time, if you want to know where to find us at an event, just come to the front row um, because that is where we will be and we'll be happy to have you join us. Um, and so there's been some changes, but there's been nothing that has completely life altered what we have to do every day. We just do it with a different lens. So one thing I would say to caregivers is just make sure that you do some research, make sure that you check in, have conversations with doctors about things that you can do. There's some great organizations that are willing to give those tips and strategies. So a lot of the tips and strategies that we've been able to use um, came from the outside and came from Philip taking additional classes, taking um, um, some workshops that then he came home with these tools and said, hey, this is what we could do at home to make things easier. Also on my part as the caregiver, just to make sure I, I took the time to look on the internet, I took the time to read different articles and different studies about things that would actually help. And so just being open to that and just realizing you do have to dedicate specific time to that. It's just not going to come natural. And there were things that we tried that didn't work and we just went back to the drawing board and said, well, let's try something different. So always being open, but making sure that you take the time to stay current on what is out there because there's a lot of people that are able to support you. There's Facebook group communities as well so there's a lot on social media where they will post things that worked or post videos and so just to be open to that and to kind of arm yourself with a toolkit it's like you need your own toolkit to be able to have strategies that you can pull from at any point in any time if I were going to encourage glaucoma patients uh, give them reasons why they should attend the glaucoma uh, patient summit uh, I would say it's about advocacy. You know, it's about taking responsibility uh, for your disease. The information that you get at, at a patient summit like this is, is invaluable. And the encouragement that, that you get from listening to subject matter experts, uh, from researchers, from uh, ophthalmologists, uh, you know, from uh, even from uh, pharmaceutical reps, is just going to inform you and make you feel more comfortable and, and truly um, get you excited about how you can better deal, live, not just survive, but thrive with the disease of glaucoma. Mm -hmm.